we're two days into a six-day patrol of the entire Hudson River estuary. So from New York Harbor up to Waterford where the Mohawk River comes in north of Albany. And um, so in addition to doing our regular traditional work, which is of course anti-pollution patrol, and uh, we've layered on uh, a water quality sampling study. Today we're sampling from Yonkers to Peekskill and we're looking at you know some just basic physical water quality um, indicators like dissolved oxygen and salinity and temperature and six of those kinds of things and then we're looking at a sewage indicator uh, called Enterococcus. It's a bacteria in mammals and um, if it's found alive in the water it's often in areas where there are a lot of people a great indicator of untreated sewage. If the sewage were fully treated the bacteria would be there but dead. What I'm doing on the boat is I collect the samples for the Enterococcus bacteria, I fill a bottle, and then we use the IDEX system, which is a very nice, clear, concise system to measure the Enterococcus. It's um, an effort to, first of all, measure the amount of untreated sewage still being received by the Hudson River. Until we started, there was no really good idea or estimate on exactly what the situation is today, 40 years or so after the Clean Water Act. So we found that there are still areas and times where sewage is a considerable contaminant. So the next part of the project was to create a website and post our data for the public. And the idea here is not to uh, do anything but give the public information which they didn't have before and which they clearly want. You know, the question we hear most on the water and on the docks is, how's the water? People aren't asking, how's the pH? They're not asking, how's the salinity? They're asking, if I swim, am I going to get sick? So we, we, we feel like we got a very good message from the public of what they wanted. So then we, we've done this study, we're actively doing the study, we put the, put the information on the website, and now we're at the point where we're seeing what the public does with it. Uh, everything is, comes from IDEX in a pre-measured little kit, fill the bottles, add a media which has a fluorescent dye in, so as the enterococcus take up the dye, they'll fluoresce when you put them under ultraviolet light. Uh, we seal the samples up in a tray that has um, demarked into little wells after incubating them for 24 hours at 41 degrees Celsius. You can look at the trays under ultraviolet light and you can actually see which wells are illuminated. Um, going by a table, this stands for how many cells are in the 100 milliliter sample and this corresponds to the federal guidelines for what they consider is a safe amount of bacteria, which in salt water it's under 100, in fresh water it's under 65. We're seeing many communities now in the, in the estuary where the locals have said, hmm, based on River Keeper's data, we see we have a problem at our local waterfront. And our local waterfront is not the same as the next village's local waterfront. Some, maybe in some cases, the village next door is better. In some cases, the village next door is worse. So the public, without being told, without being lectured, understands that um, these are local problems and that if you and your local community want good water quality and in fact there's a problem with your water quality there's nothing to do but turn around and look in the mirror and face it and deal with it and find the sources and start to, to, to work down the sources. So we're seeing that start, that process. Public saying we'll accept this responsibility for our local issues 
and we hope over the next years that that's going to lead to infrastructure improvements, investments, solving the problem, you know, fixing these sewage sources, these inputs, these leaks, one by one. We also run a hydrolab system which measures temperature, salinity, oxygen, chlorophyll, um, turbidity, and that are those are basic background parameters um, that people are interested in as a backup to the bacterial sampling. So how is the water? Um, it's much, much improved over the water that, that we had before the Clean Water Act. Um, if you take all our samples and average all the years that we've sampled, 21% of our samples fail to meet federal guidelines for swimming. So how is the water? Uh, much better than in the past, but not good enough. I really want to see the public continue to engage uh, to a greater degree because ultimately the river has to have a caring and an involved public to survive and to improve and to be restored.